guys. So today's video is gonna be an innovative one. It's a really hot summer day, I got my fan. Um, if it's making extra noise, I apologize. It is really freaking hot today. So today we're gonna be talking about five piano pieces from easy all the way to hard that you can record as a present for someone's birthday or any other type of celebration. If you guys would like tutorials on any of the pieces mentioned in this video, give this video a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, and I will be more than happy to make those tutorials for you guys. So let's get straight into it. This is me playing. Let's get straight into the video. So a little backstory of why I wanted to make this type of video. In middle school, I discovered this website called Fiverr. I don't know if you guys have heard about it. It used to be people selling their services for $5. Fiverr gets to keep $1 of every five that you earned. So you're earning $4 for every service that you make and you have to be really imaginative with your services or so I thought. My Fiverr idea was making musical card videos. I don't know if my channel is still out there. I literally have not even like checked my profile in so many years. I forgot what it's called to be honest, but something about like musical cards. So if you guys can find it, like good on you, but I think it's been deleted. I think I made like four cards and people stopped asking me to make cards. People would be like, oh, like it's my anniversary with my girlfriend. I wanted to make her something nice. Could you please record yourself saying this message or whatever and then they would send me a message and play a piece that sounds blank. You know what I mean? Sounds lovey-dovey. Really expressive. Energetic or whatever. For the Valentine's Day videos, I would kind of like do this half heart on the inside of the lid and it would reflect on the other side so it would make it like a full heart. I was like, okay, so George like loves you. And then I would play my like Chopin piece or whatever. So that idea kind of died away, like withered and died away. So sad. But it's back and it came back because even though I stopped making musical cards, the idea of like preparing a piece specifically for a person, I really, really loved because it was really fun and I enjoyed it, everyone else enjoyed it and it was a fun way to let the people close to me know that I care and I kept it going. I mentioned this in my Mother's Day gift idea video which will be linked below if you guys want to check it out. I know Mother's Day is over but like you can use these gifts for any time. So I've been making um, musical performances as presents for a long time but I've never really seen people do it so I thought it would be a cool idea to share this uh, present idea with you guys. It's good for anyone, it's good for any time. As long as you want to play the piano, whether that's classical, pop, or the song of your choosing, you can make it happen. If you decide to record a musical card, make sure to record a tiny, tiny message, something like, the vitality in this piece represents the vitality of my love for you. And they will definitely remember your present as being one of the greatest they receive. The first piece that would be great to record is Claire de Lune by Debussy. This is probably one of the most famous piano pieces out of this list. A lot of my non-musician friends have always wanted to play this exact piece for some reason. A lot of my non-musician friends have obsessed over this piece and like wanted to learn it for the longest time. It's a beautiful piece. It's got those lo-fi vibes. And honestly, you should use it for study music, if anything. If you're gonna take one thing out of this video is please listen to more classical music. I know that it feels like classical music is for the older generations and that it's not for young people. Even if you use it just for study music, it can be so calming and just make you feel really, really comfortable. You absolutely do not have to play a musical instrument to enjoy classical music and to reap the benefits of listening to classical music. I think we need more people promoting classical music and just talking about like how great and interesting it is. If my videos could make even one person want to learn more about classical music, basically like 
my life has been made. Like, that's all I want. So that was my spiel on why classical music is awesome. Let's get back on track. So this piece is six minutes. Um, that could be terrifying to some people or a piece of cake to other people. This piece being very slow, you need to cover less pages in the time given. So a faster piece that would be six minutes long would be a lot more material to pack into a tighter space. So because Claire de Lune is so flowing and so slow and calm, it actually also makes it easier to learn, which is a plus because you have less material to cover. Claire de Lune which translates to Moonlight, is based on the opening stanza of a poem called Claire de Lune um, by Paul Verlaine. Verlaine? By pa Paul Verlaine? 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 Pa Paul Verlaine? Paul Verlaine? So I'm gonna read it for you. I'm gonna put the text here in case you're like me and you like to read the text. Their song is like a landscape fantasy, where masks and burger masks and charming wives strum lutes and dance, just a bit sad to be hidden beneath their fanciful disguise. So aesthetic. Like you could literally post that on your Instagram. Like they have a poem and then they have like aesthetic music playing in the background. Like just post it on, I just gave you a free idea for an Instagram post guys. The next piece we're gonna talk about is Swan by Sansons. the movie Fantasia 2000. You can always find clips of it on YouTube. It's an amazing Disney film where they took basically snippets of awesome classical music and they animated it. So if you're new to classical music and you just want to like learn more about it, definitely check it out. It's basically a bunch of short films put together into one. Very, very, very well done. One of my favorite movies of all time. There's some classical, there's some jazz, and there's a whole lot of Disney. So if you guys love Disney as much as I do, definitely check it out. The reason I brought up Fantasia 2000 is one of the clips that they made was a bunch of pink flamingos dancing to Saint Sansa's finale of his work, Carnival of the Animals. Carnival of the Animals was a work written for two pianos and orchestra. So it's a very, very big production. There's a lot of people on stage playing this. There's a lot of moving parts to make this work. And every movement represents an animal. Like there was um, a lion, there were hens and roosters, a donkey, tortoise, elephant, swan, a beautiful, beautiful bird. And this is definitely what this piece is. So Saint-Saëns, his music is, at least for me, very Disney, very movie music, very energetic, lively, fun, which is my favorite type of music. I hate, and like don't roast me for this, long, sad pieces that just like go on and on. Just have no end, and you're like, bro, like when will it stop? Which is what I feel like most people think of when they think of classical music, which is not what it should be. It's very, very slow, very repetitive, very, very short. If you want to get technical, this one is great for practicing bringing out the melody over the accompaniment. So accompaniment is basically any kind of chords or any musical line that's not the main melody that you would sing. For example, if you would say, oh, do you remember this piece? Da na 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 da na 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 That's the melody. Everything else is the accompaniment, so it makes the melody sound amazing and it brings it out, but it's the accompaniment, it's not the melody. So if that's something you struggle with, or that's something you want to learn more about, definitely check out this one. Next. And of course we have our one pop selection for you pop girls out there, or guys.
deep is your love by the Bee Gees. Oh my god. Wow. It's very aesthetic. The lyrics really, really, really mean something to me. I really connect with that song. What's amazing about this song too and this transcription is that you can literally loop it until you get sick of it. Literally, I have done this for hours when I just discovered this song transcription and I will leave a link to the transcription that I played in this video so you guys can play it too. There is nothing more to be said about the Bee Gees. They are fantastic. They're amazing. They are iconic. So let's move on to the next piece. And the last two pieces are gonna be by the one and only Chopin. Ew, okay, I can never figure out how to say Chopin. Chopin, Chopin, Chopin. Fam, you know what? Chopin, I've been saying his name since I was six years old. I think it's a lost cause at that point. So this one is the study, opus 10, number three. This one may or may not be another one of those pieces that you were like, oh my god, I've heard it before, but like I never knew what it was. And if you want to be a pianist, you definitely need to learn some Chopin. These are pieces that you actually, actually need in your rut. And Chopin, if you don't know, was the composer that made the piano sing. He was obsessed with the human voice, he loved opera song and he wanted to transfer that over to the piano and try to make the piano emit that same kind of beauty that came from the human voice. So Chopin is a piano icon. He transformed piano music entirely back a few hundred years ago. So this piece and the next one is a classic. I mean, no offense to all my profs, but um, Chopin is a little bit of elevator music. He can be really intense, but basically elevator music to most of us. And if you wanna bring it to your music teacher and kind of kill two birds with one stone there, you can do that. And they're gonna be very proud of you for learning a piece by Chopin. And that's not something I can say about the other pieces mentioned in this video. So if you definitely want to impress your music teacher as well, go with this one. Next, let's finish this off with a bang. The last piece I'm gonna to talk to you about is Chopin's minute waltz in D flat major. So this piece is for the fast boys. work on this one for a long time to play for you guys. Definitely not beginner friendly, but if you had some kind of piano training, you should give this a try. This is definitely one of the funnest pieces I've ever played. This is my type of piece. Very fun and energetic and fast and just happy. So if you guys love that kind of music too, let me know in the comments and we can fangirl about it together. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos. See you guys next time. Bye.